In 1967, Celtic traveled to Lisbon as the first British team to reach the final of the European Cup. Away we go for the first European Cup final. A team all born within 30 miles of Celtic Park triumphed with a vibrant attacking style. It's all! Celtic has scored! It was an evening that the men who shaped it would never forget. Celtic have won the European and one that meant they would forever afterwards be known as the Lisbon Lions. The 1960s was not the best time to support Celtic, but all that was about to change. People always say the most crucial thing was Jockstein arriving in March 1965. I pointed out that I got there in January 65. I don't know if that, I don't know if that makes a great deal of difference. But um, I mean, up to that point, Celtic hadn't won a trophy since the 7-1 victory of the Rangers in 1957. But after just two months in charge, Steen sought to end that eight-year drought against Dunfermline in the Scottish Cup final. I think the team got together then. Uh, we're, we're losing at half-time 2-1 in that Cup final and come back 1-3-2. Myself, personally, I thought that was the most important game because it was his first Cup final. It was tremendous at looking at people's ability and played them to their strengths. Eighteen, Skipper McNeil has given victory to Celtic. The thing that was special about it was it meant that we had now started to, to, to win victory again. And from then on in, the club had a tremendous record. Jock Steen had been reserve team coach in the late 50s, steering many of the same players to considerable success at that level. It was a team that had grown up together, with only one member of the squad not born within a dozen miles of Celtic Park. I stayed 30 miles away, so I was the outsider of this team. I was the wee guy that was sort of pushed into the corner. We don't know you, you come from Soko. So it was great that all the boys came from that area. You and I <laughs> were together for, a, right. for a, a small, you know. Yeah. We came from the same area as well. Just in the same area. So we used to walk up Springfield Road and get a bus and yeah. I went to Bell South and yeah. went to Hollytown. A bag and of chips and that, you know. It was great. <laughs> and there was a, we had, always had that relationship. The 1965 Cup success was followed by the 1966 league title. Celtic were on the rise as the genius of Steen assembled their greatest ever side. He picked a team that was a team of experience and youth. Ronnie Simpson was quick as a tight. He was a great goalkeeper. He was, he was terrific. The two fullbacks were great athletes. He switched Tommy Gemmell from right back to left back. He brought in Jim Craig, who was a great defender, a young boy who had tremendous ability and strength. Billy McNeil and John Clark were just terrific. I don't think I've ever seen Billy losing the head in my life. John Clark was immense. The partnership was never a, a thing that was from the training ground. We just... No, that's right. We, no, we, well. It was a, a kind, of, a kind of gift you had to know what each other would do. Boy, my luck and Betty all, there weren't two better midfield players in Europe than the two guys. They could challenge, they could score a goal. It's back to all. All tries one in. He had Bobby Murdoch and then he played me at left midfield. He changed me from outside left to inside because he felt as if I should be on the ball more and also a wee bit more creative. Murdoch was, as far as I was concerned, was the best player ever to play for Celtic. He was a general, he was a creative player, he was very strong and what he was, he was a leader. We had Jimmy Johnson coming into the team who to me was the greatest entertainer. It was magnificent. It, it was, was utterly unbelievable. <laughs> he had control that, you, that, that, that was magic. It was the best. And up front, we had Chalmers, Hughes, Lennox. Good defenders, good midfield players, guys who could score goals, guys that were willing to run. 
basically we're a good team. Celtic played what was broadly an attacking 4-2-4 formation, a style of play directly inspired by a team Steen would never forget. He went to see the 1960 European Cup final in Glasgow and Real Madrid played Eintracht. That was the fifth time that they had won it on the trot. The boss realised that instead of only the front guys going for goals and making goals, you had to have other parts of your team making goals. The fullbacks had to come forward, the wing halves had to come forward, and everybody had to get into this aim of being part of the setup that led to the chances which created the goal scoring opportunities for people. We played, we practiced controlling going forward, controlling going forward, going past men. We played practice games. It was just a, a way we played. We, we never thought of playing any other way. Like the other teams were about us. That was really his philosophy. Before the 1966-67 campaign began, Celtic visited America on a pre-season tour. That was the most important thing that happened to us. Went away for five and a half weeks, which teams just been what to do now. It was just a long, long time. It was absolutely wonderful. The league champions were refreshed and ready. A momentous season lay ahead. This can be a year that every one of us can remember. So let's make sure that each player helps each other. Make sure if somebody's having a bad game, somebody near them helps. The campaign began impressively. Two trophies were won before the end of the year. Well, we won the League Cup, first of all, which in those days was played um, in October of the season. And then the Glasgow Cup, which in those days was quite an important competition because at one time you'd mainly met the other half of the old firm. And we'd beaten them in the earlier round 4-0 and then we won the final. Celtic were chasing three more trophies. In the European Cup, they reached the last four. Through the semi-finals and you're thinking, well, this is absolutely great. And who did we get? We get Dukla. On the 12th of April, Celtic tore apart Czech side Dukla Prague with a goal from Jimmy Johnston and two from Willie Wallace. It was a typically offensive performance. Dukla Prague in a semi-final, a good 3-1 win in a home leg, and then a pathetic nothing each draw over there, and it was the only time, um, and even now there's some argument about it, did we really set out to defend? He never at any time tried to stop the game other than once in that European run, and that was against Dukla over there. And he never forgave himself for that. He says, never again do we do that. Play with one man up. I crossed the halfway line once, which I think was quite rare for a fullback, an attacking fullback in those days. And as I crossed the halfway line from the dugout, I got two uh, instructions shouted at the same time. One was stop, <laughs> and the other one was keep going. So. It was that kind of game, you know, so I was totally confused, you know. But we got a great nil-nil result, and all of a sudden, it's Lisbon, here we come. Before Lisbon, though, domestic honours were at stake, beginning with the Scottish Cup final against Aberdeen. This is another game, no difference from the last one. You know well from the season started, every game's been an important one. So let's go now, Billy, and make sure that this is another game that will add to the rest of the victories we've had, and it'll be a season we'll all remember. The time he put you under pressure was when you were going out the dressing room. It was all about entertainment. The other strip was the hoops. And you could actually feel the jersey getting tighter and tighter because he had told you, you are Celtic and you must have that ability or you wouldn't be here. Willie Wallace preferred to John Hughes up front, repaid his manager's faith with two goals to seal the victory. third trophy of the season for Celtic. Then, on the 6th of May, a match against the old enemy Rangers to decide the league title. The passion in both teams, honestly. It was one of the great games because the old firm game, there aren't a better derby anywhere in the world. Jimmy Johnston was Celtic's saviour, scoring twice in a 2-2 draw. The point earned was enough to clinch the league.
And watching on was the coach of European Cup final opponents Inter Milan, Helenio Herrera. It was from end to end with passion, and Herrera was there to see it. And he must have said, oh God, I mean, what is this we're watching? He must have got a good idea about the passion and the, the heart that was in the team at that particular time. So that was the league title wrapped up, and then it was just left was uh, the European Cup. The final would be played in Portugal's capital, Lisbon. For many people, that was the first trip abroad, 1967. Most people at that time were going on holiday locally, Britain, Isle of Man, Ireland. Celtic faced a daunting task. Inter Milan were the 1964 and 65 European Cup winners. And to beat them, Celtic would have to overcome the defensive master plan that was key to Inter's continental success. It was called Catanaccio. The plan was to stop their key players before then breaking ourselves. As a team, we played a lot on the counter-attack. Because we'd already won the European Cup, and because at that time you couldn't see many games on television, we wrongly thought that perhaps Celtic were just like a second division side. Celtic relished their underdog status. Fear, never fear. It was about our ability, because we are creative. And the most important thing is we had nine match winners. We had nine goal scorers and we had so many creative players. We had the front runners that were unselfish and chased paper on a windy day. The day before the game, he had training at the National Stadium in Lisbon, and it was a beautiful sunny day. We didn't know, but he knew that Inter Milan were in the terraces. Their players and their coaches were looking at us training. We asked our coach whether we could stay and watch Celtic train. And it was a massive mistake, because they had a completely different training session to ours. It was like a party. It was a just to carry on training session. We just messed about and it was very relaxed. It was, it was, it was a great build up for the cup and it was very, very relaxed. It was great. We had a really unusual moment the night before the game. Jock's team wanted us out of the hotel for a while. A guy he knew called Brody Lennox had a house. England were playing somebody at Wembley the night before we played on a Wednesday evening um, and we watched the, uh, the game there. And in a sense, the story shows you how naive we were because as we came back down to the hotel, and by this time it was in dusk, the trainer suddenly said, there's a hotel over there. We could see it, but we couldn't get to it. It was a big fence over a big park. It was full of bricks and rocks. So we climbed this fence and amongst these rocks, and really, really shouldn't have done it, you know. I mean, really, when you think to look back now, it couldn't have happened in modern era. But we were fine, you know. You could have damaged your ankle, you could have hurt yourself going across the wall. But there was just a sort of naivety about it because you'd never been in that position before. And, and there's a great Glasgow word, gallus, meaning a little bit of confidence and uh, a bit of arrogance, you know. And um, I think we all probably had that. And. Um, that showed <laughs> the arrogance to do something like that the night before a game. Inter Milan, like all Italian teams, uh, were uh, Catanaccio um, exponents, and some idiot in the final gave away a penalty in seven minutes, and uh, I still don't think it was a penalty. Jim Craig says it wasn't a penalty, Tells lies, diabolical. He was in it, the, the player that I tackled was an outside left going down the inside right channel. He was obviously going to come onto his left foot and I ran across his path and collided with him, as I meant to do. And the referee gave a penalty. I was horrified. He kidding himself. He gave into the lead. After that, everything went wrong. They began to play football. We ran and chased, but we just couldn't win the ball back. It was all us. They could have thrown two and three balls in the park and they wouldn't have got them off us. You know what I mean? Everybody played well on the night, did what they had to do.
control because here again, it was Jock and his thoughts. It was going to be difficult, but we must continue. We very seldom crossed the halfway line, and um, you know the goal came halfway through the second half, and we're all beginning to be a bit nervous for that time. Good me, by the way, because I can imagine the headlines. <laughs> After 63 minutes, Craig found Tommy Gemmell. Explosively, Celtic were back on level terms. Loads and loads of shots at goals, and we would heard their goalkeeper was a weak point in our team, and he sat and he played, he played wonderful. Celtic's belief grew. They grew stronger, while we were more tired than we should have been. The marvellous thing about it was that the heat, and at the end of the game, we were stronger than them. Because when we scored the second goal, there were no way could we have come out and changed. With extra time looming, Bobby Murdoch's shot was deflected in by Stevie Chalmers. You could see their heads falling. Where we were looking for more, they were looking for shelter. We really played well and deserved to win the cup. Had, had it went to extra time, I think we'd have won three or four. The, the boys just played great. With more than 40 shots on goal, it was clear Celtic were worthy European champions. When the final whistle went, I turned and John Clark and I just jumped into each other's arms and we're jumping about, you know. Then all of a sudden there's hundreds of people on the pitch and we think, better get off the pitch. So I get off the pitch quite quickly. I was sad. I was angry. I tried to avoid the fans to get to the dressing room, just to think about how on earth we had not managed to win. Then we says, and where's the cup? You know, nobody knew where the cup was. And then somebody else says, Billy's away to get it. We were always a team and a very good team. Um, and I was part of that team. All of a sudden, I'm there on my own. I'd be much happier if the whole team was on that part. That was the only thing that disappointed us, wasn't it? Yeah. Not doing, you know, the traditional lap of honour, you know. But we made up for it when we came back here because the crowds were here at Celtic oh. Park waiting for us. The streets of Glasgow were at a standstill. The fans came out in their thousands to welcome home Steen's history makers. And we've done a... <laughs> rather than a lap on the walking around, we've done it in a lorry, didn't we? That's right. We an accordion back there as well. An incredible five trophies in a single season a clean sweep at home and the European Cup. But the team were not quite finished. Jock's professionalism, he went over the game and told us a few things he didn't like. The penalty got a mention. Then he mentioned that um, we were going to play in Alfredo de Stefano's testimonial on the following Wednesday. Strange thing for a player to say, but we were superb on the night. And we, Jimmy, had been fouled badly by the fullback. And he then took the ball to him every opportunity and beat him in every way possible. Up to Johnson. Johnson gives the impression they're thoroughly enjoying this. Sock round the ankle, standing in the ball. Suddenly picking up here, past one man, past two. That's a despairing tackle. Johnson back very deep. Real really have no answer when he runs at them. They don't see this too much in European football. Johnson going right. Oh, I'll pass through to Lennox. Lennox shoots, he scores. Faint-hearted appeal for offside, but he beat the trap. 1-0. Johnson. One point, late in the game, he went towards the full-back and he waved them in, and the full-back just went. I turned his back now, because he had skinned them. I think Real are just baffled about what this wee fella's doing. Oh. <laughs> he was great that night. He was he put on a show for the support man. It was wonderful. 
all the European journalists came to see that game because I think half of them thought this team was really superb in Lisbon, but was it a fluke or can help there? And that game really cemented the reputation. I think the way the, the whole season panned out, we started here playing Manchester United and George, best player, and we know or Bobby and all the guys played. We beat them 4 1 here. And when the season finished, we went to Madrid and played in front of 125,000 people. And beat Real Madrid in a really competitive match 1 0. There's Paul Addison in the cake. It had been a season like no other and was the foundation for unprecedented domestic success. Great characters in the team again, start from scratch. Great manager, got us all prepared for all the games. So it was just a great ability in the team and great work rate. We played loads of different teams for loads of different countries. We played in these leagues and won the championship nine, ten or whatever. We never played a team that was fit on us. But when we trained, we really trained. We were, we were as fit a team as you could play against. Winning the league was something that was important. You know, the cup, it, it, the cup is spectacular. It's, it's exciting, but the, the league is a, it's a thing. I think it was something like, like nine in a row or something. It was absolutely magnificent. Down to Big Jock, there's no no doubt about that. He, he, he filled himself. He brought in good players. And then we had the young boys coming through, like Lou McCarrick, George Connolly, uh, Davy Hay, Kenny Douglas, uh, Jimmy Quinn, all came through. And then he brought Dixie Deans in. Right through the, the period he was there, he kept adding players who were keen for success and desperate to do as well as the previous team had done. From 1965 to 1974, Celtic swept all before them, winning an incredible 25 trophies, including nine consecutive league titles. But one trophy shines more brightly than any other the European Cup won by the Lisbon Lions. Trailblazers, you know, we were, you know. Other clubs, England, particularly, who had a lot of chances to do something, we gave them belief in how to play European football. Well, it had been a Latin domination up to that point, you know, with Real Madrid five times in the chart, Benfica and the Italian sides. Celtic came in 67 with an entirely new approach. Everybody remarked on the fact that it was one with such an open display of football, and, and although it was only 2-1 uh, in terms of a score, it should have been very much more. You know, everybody before then would copy the Italians, wouldn't they? So a different style has beaten the Italians, and, and not only beaten them, but beaten them quite comprehensively. It did change things in Europe. Teams adopted different styles, and I think it was for the better, because the Italian football was boring. So after we won that, Man United won the following year? and then AC Milan the year after that. But for the next 18 years, it was always a team from Northern Europe. Ajax three times, Bayern Munich, then Liverpool come into it. The Celtic style would, will, will, think, always, will this... always give them an, a, a, the chance of playing well in, in European football as well. What I'm really uh, very pleased to have been part of was to have been part of a side that made such an impression because all the continental papers, the Dutch, the French, the German, even the Italians all said, this was a great performance. And did we finish there? <laughs> great to look back on, you know. We're always winning championships and cups in your own country. And the thing about the uh, Lisbon Lions is we stick together forever in the bad times and good times. We're always there. Players come and go, but some achievements live forever. What was done on the Lisbon evening in May 1967 will be part of football lore as long as the game is played. For it's a grand old team to play for, for it's a grand old team to see. And when you know it's history, it's enough to make your heart go, oh, 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 oh. We had that every game, every bus, we had that from start to finish, honestly. See the dressing room windows, Jock opened the dressing room windows and you heard these songs, second nature.